Well, go on, everybody. I am your Jamaican queen, Miss Y. You are tuned in to How I See It TV, and this is Why Caught Alive. So, I have not watched Heaven Lees and Carlos's Messy Mondays in a while. As many of you all know, I don't see it for Heavenly at all. And I'm always sad I am Carlos. So, um, when YouTube decided to play their Messy Mondays um, video after a YouTube video that I was watching, I was like, okay, they're reviewing the season premiere of Love and Marriage Huntsville. Let me see what they have to say about it. And you know what? I'm glad that I did. Now, if you didn't watch their Messy Monday live, then you can go do so if you'd like, because I'm not playing the audio. I'm just going to be reading from their transcript and just giving my opinions on a few parts that stood out to me. So, First things first, Heavenly was questioning how Martel ended up getting arrested on the very first day of filming the show. She felt like it was a setup. She felt like it was all a scheme. Carlos tried to, you know, play it off like, no, they were just, I don't know, following the reality as he kept saying but then heavenly brought into focus martel's negligence because let's take away from the fact for just one second that he got arrested even if he wasn't going to get arrested on that day he still left minor children in a vehicle by themselves to run up to a courthouse to get some documents without even knowing how long that process was going to take. That proved negligence on his part. And so Heavenly pointed that out in like um, at the 15 minute and 35 second mark where she says with me he left the kids in the car while he ran up there to get his paperwork and then got arrested like dude first of all them little kids you don't leave them in the car i'm just gonna put that out there number one and I'm glad that she said that because they're still going through a whole custody case, y'all. And he's out here proving that he is negligent as a parent. Next thing. As much as I don't see it for Heavenly, I can appreciate her putting Melody's filing of that report into context. What Heavenly basically said is that if Melody wanted Martel to be arrested on the spot, if it was on some, yeah, go arrest him, then the minute she filed that report and those people down there at the police station said, do you want us to go get him now? She would have said yes. What Heavenly said is that that filing was more so like a cease and desist, right? And she's correct. As I keep saying, Melody filing that report was her creating a legal paper trail that says this man who I don't speak to outside of what the court requires me to speak to him about is threatening that he's going to release our intimate video. And what I'm learning is that it's a whole plot that he has to release it under some fake identity to make it seem as if it's me and some other guy. And so by creating that paper trail, she protected herself. She protected her peace of mind. She protected her image. And she also protected the mental well-being of her children because let's say she trusted that Martel was just talking and that he would not have put that video out there and she left it alone and then he did put it out there 
than all the people who are talking about, oh, it was just a text message. They would have been out here looking at her video. She would have been humiliated, probably going through depression. Her children, God forbid, their friends see the video, would be going through ridicule and a lot of craziness at school. So Melody did the right thing in protecting herself. So Heavenly asked Carlos, like, you know, why didn't Melody tell Martel that she filed um, a report? And Carlos confirmed something that I felt. And he said that at the time Melody filed, from his understanding, they weren't on speaking terms. Obviously, a lot of their communication was done via courts because the only reason why they would communicate or should be communicating is about the kids. So when it came to any decision making around the kids, the courts had to handle it. In addition to maybe they'll text each other about pick up and this is your week and my week, but they don't have a relationship where they talk. So as I said, Melody doesn't trust that man. She's not talking to him. So why should she feel comfortable after he made that threat? Why should she feel comfortable in her spirit that uh, he's not going to do it? No. She went and filed that report. So just in case he did it, she had paperwork that would prove that he threatened her and he's the first person that police should be looking at if her video is ever leaked. Him and his side piece. Heavenly questioned whether or not um, Melody would have, well, if it was the show that caused Melody and Martel to break up and To Carlos' credit, I will say that he made it clear that, for one, Martel was um, cheating way before the show. And um, to Melody's credit, he said that when Melody found out that, unbeknownst to her, the infidelity was continuing, she did not want to do the show anymore. She was ready to be done with that marriage. And he said that he and Melody had a conversation, as we know, and he told her, look, your story could basically help a lot of people. So why don't we use the show to discuss infidelity? Basically, right? And um, Melody said, okay. And then at that point, Martel was like, he really wasn't cheating at that point in time. That's what he was telling her. So in Melody's mind, during that first season, it seems that she was on the verge of divorce and she was doing the show just as Carlos King says, follow the reality. The reality was that He was cheating on her in the past. She thought that was over. The second they were about to film the show, she found out that the cheating didn't stop. She told Carlos that she didn't want to do the show anymore. And he convinced her that it would be great to see this play out on TV. She thought about it. They agreed and they moved forward. And then they decided to stay together. So what Carlos was trying to say is that it's not the show. And the breaking point for Melody after giving Martel chance after chance after chance was he now had a baby by another woman. And that was a huge deal breaker. Especially because he's having a baby. Well, this is me talking now. He's having a baby by a super disrespectful woman. Now, I can't imagine Melody remaining in a situation where now she has to be taking care of this woman's child while 
still simultaneously dealing with that woman's disrespect and Martel being disrespectful. And then he also told her, remember, on the re- on one of the reunions, she told us that he let her know that the older men, the elders that he is talking to, they're telling him to just figure out how to cheat better. They weren't telling him to not cheat. And so a baby on the way, you're not trying to do better. You're just trying to figure out a way to cheat better. And you want me to go speak to the women elders for them to tell me to just grin and bear it. No, it's time for me to go. And God said, go. And so Melody left. So Heavenly asking that question to me, I felt like it was just like, lady, she would have left show or not. And I'm so, I'm glad that Carlos said what he said. He made it clear that he believed that Melody would have left even if there was no love and marriage Huntsville. Now, Carlos asked Heavenly about how, well, the scene with Martel and his mom and how Heavenly would have handled the situation as a mother of boys, right? And Heavenly said that she would definitely have her son's back on camera, but behind the scenes, he would have been getting a beat down for sending that threat to Melody. Um, Heavenly admitted that Marlene was doing a lot of gaslighting and Evanly also said that you know Marlene she was like you know you don't do that to the kids and so Heavenly said he did it to the kids and I'm happy that Heavenly said that because when he Heavenly went on to say that when he actually sent those texts he was affecting his children right and she said that martel was wrong he shouldn't have been sending those text messages those threats to melody and melody clocked him melody clocked him and reported it to the police as she should so i'm glad that heavenly pointed out that in that scene where marlene is talking about you don't do that to your kids and even now who's talking about you don't send your ex to jail if y'all have kids and if it's something that y'all can work out y'all understand that melody and martel they are not on speaking terms they co-parent through the court system there's no working out anything and martel should have known that he has children and that he shouldn't be even thinking about wanting to expose his ex-wife in that way just for the sake of his kids. But as Martel said in his Queen Sheba interview, that when he sent that text, he said, I don't care if this will end me. That's what his that's what his thinking process was. He didn't care about himself. He didn't care about his children. He didn't care about Melody and how any of that would have affected them. Right? And what, Melody was supposed to sit there and hope and pray that he would not follow through with his text, his his threat? So as I said, I don't like Heavenly, but when she's right, she's right. And she's absolutely right in saying that Martel is the one that would have impacted their children. Martel was the one who wasn't thinking about their children when he sent that threat. Melody was thinking about a myriad of things when she went and filed that report. And one of those things was her children and how her children would be impacted if this unhinged man who is their father would have went out there and released that video of her. Carlos and Heavenly also talked about how Martel proposed to Melody at her college graduation party. And he said he and Martellas had this conversation in the in the past 
And Heavenly was like, oh my God, that was so sweet. And Carlos was like, ah, ta, 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 ta. nope, that's not sweet. That wasn't sweet. And I agree. I feel like any man that uses your special occasion, a special moment in your life, like your graduation, your graduation party, um, even your birthday party, I feel, in my opinion, Anyone who, any man who uses a special moment like that to propose marriage in front of your family, your friends, in an environment where it's highly unlikely that you're going to say no, is a little bit manipulative. And Carlos said that he doesn't think that that was sweet. He said Melody was early 20s, 21, 22 years, years of age. She just graduated college. She hadn't really lived any real life yet, right? She left high school. She didn't really have any real relationships there. She went to college. She met Martel. He was her first real life relationship. She graduated and as she's moving on to this next phase of her life, as a 22-year-old young woman still trying to navigate this world of adulthood here comes this man who's a little bit older than older than she is a man who has lived a little bit of a life we found out that martel was arrested back in the day for doing some stuff that he was supposed to be doing and he saw melody as this young, beautiful girl from a stable home. She's intelligent. She is on track to do great things. And he is technically a delinquent. Failing school. This this is Martell and Melody's words, not mine. Right? Melody had to help him study and help him pass some exams. And he saw Melody's light and he didn't want this good woman to be out here with any other man and he might have meant some good in the beginning but somewhere along the line he realized that melody was a good woman with a great future ahead of her and he wanted to attach himself to that star that was on the rise and Melody was young and was in love and she said yes to that proposal and as she got older and she realized all of the things that she was enduring in this relationship with this man who was her first real love she grew up and she was like yeah this life is not for me. There must be better out there. And Carlos said, Carlos said that while that when Melody put her foot down and decided that she was going to get a divorce, one of the things that Martel told her, one of the things that Martel told her when she decided that she was going to file for a divorce, Martel told her that ain't nobody going to want you with all those kids. That's emotionally abusive. And that is what a lot of men do. They find a good woman. They knock her up over and over and over and over again. With the thought process that if she has multiple children, she won't leave. Because in her heart, she's going to feel like nobody's going to want me. Because I have three kids, four kids, five kids. But Melody said, I don't care what you say. Nobody has to want me with my four kids. I'm still going to leave. And a lot of people have said Martel felt like Melody was not going to divorce him. Which is why he was throwing out words like that. Now, I don't know if this was ever said on the show or not. I don't recall. But Cartel... Not cartel, (laughs) y'all. But Carlos is telling us that Martel told Melody when she filed for divorce that 
no man is going to want her with all the children that she has. How horrible is that to say to somebody? Just because you want to manipulate them into staying. Just because you want them to be afraid of leaving and moving on. Well, God said go and she left. So Carlos and Heavenly did have Melody's back in this review. They added a lot of context. They spilled a lot of tea. There was some behind the scenes things that we did not know. So if y'all want to go and give the um messy mondays episode a listen y'all can go ahead and do that but if my um breakdown was good enough for you then thank you for listening please remember to like this video share the link to my channel if you feel like my content needs some crowd subscribe if you have not done so yet follow me at how i see it on instagram twitter now called x and tiktok and leave a comment below so i know how you see things too as i always say walk good bye